Oh my god, what? Wait, that definitely wasn't a thing before, right? Or has Magikarp always hopped out of the water like that? Oh, that is amazing. Ah, Whiskash, come on, man. And welcome back! This is now episode 2 of the Crown Tundra. After last time, we caught the little Suicune you can see in the bottom left there in our first Dynamax adventure. And now we're heading off to Freezington. So real quick, let's take another look at the map. Uh, we basically only explored this little area here. And then this is the first and maybe only town? Oh wait, right here we got Freezington. Uh, but there seems to be quite a lot more to explore. So maybe now that we're done with like the first little bit of the story, we can focus a little bit more on exploring because y'all already know I love me some good old exploring. You can call me Dora, not Lauren. That would have rhymed, but for more epic rhymes like that, make sure to smash like and stay tuned for more episodes coming up. We got Freezington, a quite little town with cute little old ladies. And also farmers, apparently. Hello, hello, what have we here? Another visitor? I am the mayor of this fair town of Freezington. I must say, quite a surprise to have visitors arriving in our out-of-the-way town one after another. Wait, who's been here before me? Might you be here to learn about the legend of the King of Bountiful Harvest as well? Yes? Ah, never mind. It hardly bears asking. After all, there's very little otherwise to attract our visitors to our sleepy little corner. Which is a bit of a shame, really. People come all this way to investigate what turns out to be a mere fairy tale. But since you've made the journey, I must offer you this Freezington specialty as a memento. We got the boat neck sweatshirt. I'm pretty sure that's what we're wearing already, but it's a different style of it. We got the Freezington's fame sweatshirt. It's a shirt emblazoned with the likeness of the King of Bountiful Harvest. I'm afraid it hasn't sold quite as well as we'd hoped. We've got a fair number left over. The illustration's based on extremely ancient accounts of the King's appearance, hence the unusually sized head. But we thought it might make the design a touch more hip, as they say. If you'd like to see what the King really looked like, I suggest you take a look at the statue by the fields in the center of our village. By the by, while you're here in the Crown Tundra, feel free to let your lead Pokemon out of its ball and take it for a stroll. Farewell for now! So that is obviously Calyrex they're talking about, the new legendary or mythical Pokemon here in the Crown Tundra. And we got Peony, of course, our favorite new character, who seems to have set up base over here! Okay, okay, I'm coming! We gotta check out that statue, we gotta go to Peony. We are keeping quite busy in the Crown Tundra so far. How you been liking it, LT Gray? Oh yeah, he's grasping for those legendaries. Welcome, got some more lovely goods for sale. And this time it's just for regular money because as we found out, there is actually a new ore here in the Crown Tundra called the Dynite Ore. Uh, but I'm guessing you only get those from the Dynamax Adventures, and you can only use those or buy stuff over there, too. Every year, the cold seems to bite harder. It's getting to be too much for these old bones. Oh yeah, I didn't even really mention it, because I guess it's just obvious, but uh, the Pokemon still follow us here in the Crown Tundra, which is nice that they didn't scrap that for no reason, but we got a little horsey and, I guess, Calyrex on its back? Somehow, it feels as if it's missing something. Yeah, it's missing its big ol' head, dude. We know Calyrex has the biggest brain in Pokemon. But on that statue, it seems to be missing its big ol' noggin. As we get a utility umbrella. It protects the holder from the effects of rain and harsh sunlight. That's definitely interesting. I guess it could be useful for Pokemon that have things like solar power? Or, I mean, other abilities, I guess, that would hurt you in the sun. I think it's called dry skin, actually. I don't know how that would really be useful, though. Even if you have dry skin, I mean, it wouldn't be worth it to just 
use up your item slot on that umbrella, but it's cool. We had the heavy duty boots. Now we got the utility umbrella and we got two Obama snows standing in the way of this item. Come on, dude. Don't, don't do this to me. Don't do me like this, Obama snow. We got a piece of charcoal, which somehow we hadn't gotten before. I swear there'd been a charcoal somewhere in Sword and Shield, right? Like, that that can't be the first time we've ever seen a charcoal. All our youngins have gone off to live in the big city. It's tough for us old folks getting by with only our Pokemon. You'll be fine. Pokemon is all you need. Look at this lady and her little spiel. They're fine. Perfectly round and joyous as can be. And we actually can explore the houses too. That's really cool. I don't know why I was in- Oh my- I was not expecting Nebby to be in here. Yo! It's cold, dearie. Why not stay a while and get warmed up? I want to know what Nebby's doing here. That's the real question, Grandma. Oh, that's Woofy. I found it shivering outside the village and just had to bring it home. You know, I think it was just about when I found Woofy that other strange Pokemon began appearing in the tundra. I've never seen a Pokemon like Woofy before. Maybe it'd be best to have a proper trainer take care of it. If only I could find a dependable one. You mean someone like me? Come on. Give it up, Grandma. Aww. Let me guess. We have to finish our story portion of the Crown Tundra before we get Nebby. Do you like walking around together with your favorite Pokemon? You know what? Not really. Not in the Crown Tundra, or I guess in Sword and Shield, where they lag behind if you take or go more than five miles per hour. Let's keep those sweeties in their balls then. Okay, so just like in the Isle of Armor, you have someone that gives you the option of having your Pokemon follow you or not. I mean, I guess it's nice to have the option, but you already know I gotta have El Tigre behind me, even if he can't quite keep up. This is why you don't skip leg days, guys. Look at him, he's struggling out here in the snow. But I guess now we should go check out Peony. I mean, there is one more building over here, though. Of course, we can't tread through the bushes. That would have been a little bit too much for Pokemon, I suppose. But we can find a TR hidden behind them. And it is going to be the one for Gunk Shot. As far as I remember, TRs are like the old school TMs and that you can only use them once. And they don't respawn either. So that's, I don't know, kind of weird. You only get one Gunk Shot ever. There's only one shot for Gunk Shot. And here is the mayor's house. Have you had a look at our statue of the King of Bountiful Harvest? Oh my gosh, El Tigre! Oh no, he's stuck, guys! Well, we actually did already take a look at the statue, and it said it was missing a piece, so I'm guessing we're gonna have to find Calyrex's big ol' head and attach it to it somehow. So let's now go talk to Peony, unless... Did you explore this house, or was this the one with Nebby? Oh no, we got Beldum instead. Is Metagross in the Crown Tundra? Yo, I think that confirms it, actually. Oh, I am so excited, man. I'm definitely going to try to build up a new team for this playthrough. I guess I can consider this a playthrough of just the DLC, but we only got El Tigre so far, who's probably going to be hitting level 100 soon enough. Uh, but the rest of the team can definitely be some new Pokemon. And by new, I mean like ones that we didn't use in the playthrough, because there's no actual new Pokemon. Aside from Calyrex and the other legendaries, but here you are. Here I am. This pokey little place will be our lodgings. And what's this? Calyrex's head? But as of this moment, it's also something far more important. Our base camp! I know, I know. Not much of a base camp, is it? Still, we've got to give it a proper air of importance, haven't we? Now, enough faffing about, Orange. Let me tell you what the Peony Exploration Team is after. Around here, they've got a fair few strange and mysterious legends. For example, a huge-headed Pokemon known as the King of Bountiful Harvest. Not to mention, a massive red tree where legendary flying Pokemon gather. And furthermore, these great Hulk and Dot-based giants that sleep in some ruins of some. Etc. See what I mean? This place is just bursting with juicy legends. And we're not stopping until we found just how much truth they've got to them. We are the Peony Exploration Team. I didn't agree to that. The heck, man? And this is our grand noble magnificent goal. To catch them all? 
course, if I had my way, I'd be doing this with my darling Mia. <laughs> oh no, he's crying. But who knows? They say even chancy meetings can lead to blissful f Oh my. The puns are too strong. Blissful friendships. You love to see it. So here's to a grand adventure, Expedition Chief Orange. Me? Obviously. Look, what do you think would happen if the two of us went gallivanting off together? My dear Nia could come along for a grand emotional reunion and find this place empty. Just the thought of it, my own darling daughter sitting alone in this room, pining for her papa. Come on, don't cry again, man. Nope, not on my watch. I'd never let that happen. So I'll be the hold down the fort chief. Which means you get the pleasure of being the expedition chief. <laughs> so basically he's going to make us do all the work is what he's really saying. Which brings me to this. Go on. Have it. And we finally get our expedition uniform. Which is of course the signature outfit for the crown tundra. Oh my god. The glasses are I picked are perfect for this. Fits you like a glove. I brought some spare uniforms so my dear Nia would have a few to change into. So there's enough to give you one. And if you ever need a change or have a kip, by all means, just head into the bedroom back here. What the heck is a kip? I've heard this multiple times now. I need someone more brilliantly British to let me know because I have no idea, dude. I've got some different colored scarves in there, so switch it up if you fancy a bit of style. Here, have these two. Legendary Clue 1. Okay. Well, I haven't got a clue what this is, but apparently a kip is a nap, according to you guys. So I guess we can have a little nap over there, as in we can heal our Pokemon. And this is a clue written by Peony with an old photo attached to it. There's a fairy tale in Freezington about the legendary Pokemon known as the King of Bountiful Harvest. In the legends, the king is said to wear a massive crown on its head, but the wooden statue near the fields shows no sign of a crown. So if it wasn't obvious already, we gotta take that big old rock on the table and put it right on Calyrex's head. But not before getting another clue with unique drawings. Oh my god. That is amazing. <laughs> far, far into the giant's bed lies a temple where the giant of stone sleeps. On the temple's door are strange words. Let the mon. The door is firmly shut. We could try to figure out what the missing parts there are. I mean, obviously it says let the something Pokemon have a cha changing. We'll figure this out later, okay? Sunken in the side of Snow Slide Slope lies a temple. Another one? Wait, this is a green one. Oh my god, are there actually more Reggies than we thought? Or maybe not, because this is just Regieliki and Draco. Oh wait, those were the original three, right? Ice, Rock, and Steel. I'm gonna guess that's what it is, but can't quite figure out what the missing parts there are. I'm sure we can probably look at these clues whenever we want to as the final one will be for the legendary birds, the Galarian forms of Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. When the sun reaches its zenith, it shines directly down upon a great tree with leaves that seem to burn. It is there that the legendary wings come to roost. Their legendary clues I've meticulously compiled from hours of dedicated telewatching. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm Peyote's shaking his leg just like I always do. First off, why not have a look at that clue about the King of Bountiful Harvest? Seems like this King's bonds with its loyal steed, or whatever you call it, run proper deep. So if I had to name this expedition, I'd call it... The Sacred Bonds of Sovereign and Seed! I mean Steed. There's a great big statue of it bang in the middle of the village. Though its head isn't as massive as in my notes. But... Oh, there is no butt. There's only head. Butt head. So I'm going to stick with the expedition clothes for now. I feel like the glasses we got going on, or rather the shades, and the white hair seem to fit pretty nicely with it. I've just had an idea. Here's a little something to help you out. A master ball? What? So we got two master balls now. 
since I actually haven't used my original one yet. This is supposed to be one ultra mega corker of a ball. Use it whenever you order. It got ages to go from somebody I used to know. I never could bring myself to use it though. If you ever get a bit turned around, come on back to base camp anytime. You can't miss it. Just look for the adventuring crew flag I stuck out front. Handmade by yours truly. Anyway, I suppose that's that. Let the grand adventure begin! I thought it begun when the title screen popped up. Or the title card thing, you know, the trusty steeds and whatever else he was talking about. That was pretty weird, I gotta say, but I kind of liked it. So let's go ahead and grab this big ol' rock. If we can carry it, that is. Oh my god, okay, I've, I've got it over Peyote's voice, alright? My pillow's got your eye, eh? Your pillow? Excuse me? I've got some words of wisdom to impart. If you can put your head on it and have a kip, it's a pillow. Okay, I think I would have figured out that it means nap now with the context clues there, but... Unfortunately, I went and left my favorite pillow back at home. So I went to have a look around town for something to rest my head on. And you settled on a head. Okay. Can I have it? Come off it! You want me to hand over my super ultra mega comfy pillow? That's asking a lot, even coming from you, chief. But I'm the chief, though. What the chief goes, or says, goes, right? What's that? You think my pillow's got something to do with the legendary? Well, in that case... <laughs> Seriously? If you really want it, Chief. Who am I to refuse? That's right. I'm the Chief here. Go on then. Have it. But you better make sure you track that legend down. It's a freaking rock. It's the white rock from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Manifested as a wooden crown instead. So I guess it's not a rock after all. Even though all of y'all claimed it was a rock. So if it wasn't obvious from the 70 clues that we've gotten already... This thing goes on top of that statue over there. Please don't tell me the game's gonna show us. Oh, okay. I was about to say, dude, they made it pretty obvious with all the clues and everything where it's supposed to go. I was gonna be pretty disappointed if they really still don't think that people would have figured it out. But instead, we get a nice cinematic view of all the areas we're gonna get to explore in the Crown Tundra. As I guess now we get to explore it in its full extent. Now I'm kind of curious if we would have chosen to just go off to Freezington from the beginning, if we could have actually just, you know, explored everything without Peony giving us the exposition and all that. Oh, what's that? Got some little footsteps by the tree. I'm guessing another legendary clue. Yes, there they are. <gasps> Guess who's back, back, back. Sonia's back, back, back. Sonia's back. These are exactly what I was looking for. I knew my hypothesis was spot on. And the hair twirl is back too. Isn't her belly button a little cold though? What are you doing in a place like this, Orange? What are you doing here? I keep asking myself that exact same question. If I'd known it was going to be this cold here, I would have thought things through a bit more. But here I am, stuck in the Crown Tundra, trying to learn more about a group of Pokemon. There are some Pokemon that prefer places where there are no people, you see? Pokemon that choose to live in isolation. The Crown Tundra here is just the place for that sort of Pokemon. If my theory is correct, then I think a certain trio of legendary Pokemon could be lurking somewhere in these lands. I'm sure my theory's not wrong. If you want some proof, then look there! See those footprints? Well, what about them? Is it... is it your footprints, Sonia? Did you plant them yourself? Okay, fine. Let's check him out. We got the Iron Will Pokemon evidence. 2% of the data needed to track it. Oh, of course. I figured there was going to be something similar to the Diglets from the Isle of Armor, and it looks like here in the Crown Tundra, we're going to be tracking down footprints for the Iron Will Pokemon, the Cavern Pokemon, and the Grassland Pokemon. Oh, it's the Swords of Justice, right? They're all somewhere out here in the Crown Tundra, 
And there's evidence like this scattered all over the place that'll lead us to them. If we could find more evidence and collect 100% of the data needed to track these legendaries down, then I bet we could use my Pokemon Finder to figure out what habitats they're living in. But this place is wicked cold, and it's putting me in hibernation mode. Are you planning to stick around here for a while? Of course, another adult needs the help of their favorite child, the champion. I'll reward you for your hard work, of course. I'll be waiting in that house there, so I can stay warm and cozy, and maybe feel my fingers. So that I can grip a pen and write, of course. Oh yeah, I definitely wasn't thinking about Sonia's fingers. No, nope, no siree. I definitely wasn't going to make a naughty joke about them. Not at all. So now let's go ahead and place the Calyrex head, the big brain, where it belongs. And see what happens. Dunk. Russell, Russell. A schwunk? A what? Why is that horse so, like... I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. There's just something so weird looking about its expression. Or maybe its eye. The wooden crowd fits perfectly. Or wooden crown. Okay. Was that Calyrex's cry? Oh. It's Calyrex himself! Or itself! Oh my god! Does it... Want you to follow it? I didn't think it was going to be popping up already. Yo, El Tigre! What the heck, man? Of course, if we walk away too far from it, it just disappears. you love to see it. Was this path actually here earlier, by the way? I feel like it wasn't. But, I mean, it's here now. So let's see what the legendary's got to say. Cron? I think you mean crown, don't ya? Seems as if the mysterious Pokemon wants you to test his strength. Do you want to ready a Pokeball? What? Sure. Crow crown What? We're actually battling Calyrex already. This is... Definitely not what I was expecting. That's the second unexpected thing so far. As I guess it's got some dialogue. This is somewhere between a trainer battle and a legendary battle. As right now, its HP and name are just question marks. So I'm gonna guess that we probably can't catch it. Uh, Don't really want to kill it on accident either. Darkest Lariat it is. Oh my goodness. That does not affect El Tigre, my dude. And that means you are probably dead, because this is very, very effective. Goodbye, King. Or should I say, Sweet Prince. Have a good night. Well, at least El Tigre is going to get level 98. <laughs> dude, did we just miss out on catching Calyrex? I mean, I'm, there's no way, right? There, Like, if we threw a Pokeball, it probably wouldn't have worked. We gotta hope, we gotta pray that that's the case. Otherwise, we literally just missed out on the main legendary of this DLC. Did you have fun? Getting beat down by our giant wrestling tiger? Yeah, I'm sure he had a good time. Excuse me? Oi, oi, what's up? I've made a huge mistake, Peony. Please help me. I heard a big ruckus coming from over here. What's this now, Chief? Were you having a Pokemon battle? Has he really not noticed yet? Huh? What a massive noggin! <laughs> I love that Pokemon acknowledges the fact that Calyrex is so dang weird looking, man. Definitely the biggest brain, but also the weirdest looking brain in Pokemon history. What's this? Oh my... What? What is happening? Is this real? Is this really a Pokemon? What? Yes, a sturdy body, just as I expected. 
I hope he doesn't mind that I make use of it for the time being. <gasps> Calyrex is talking through Peony right now. It's taken over its body to communicate with us. That is very creepy, but also very cool. Are you the Pokemon? Oh, I see you have grasped the situation already. Very astute of you. I am Calyrex. I am the one known as the King of Bountiful Harvests. I have borrowed this man's body in order to thank you in person, so to speak. Indeed, there are no words to adequately express my gratitude toward you for restoring my statue. In days long past, I reigned over these lands as king. The humans offered me their loyalty and respect, as I was able to bring lush vegetation to the land and give them plentiful harvest year after year. However, it seems that over many, many years, the people of this land have forgotten. The people have forgotten my existence. They used to make offerings to me every year, but even the tradition has long since been lost to the ravages of time. You see, it is the faith of the people that grants me strength. And now, I have lost all but a fraction of my former power. Even my loyal steed has abandoned me. However, you were kind enough to restore my statue. That act has returned some strength to me, at least enough to speak to you by borrowing the body of another. Now, kind-hearted human child, I have a favor to ask of you. Kinda hard to refuse. Such an imposing figure. I must know once and for all whether the people have truly forgotten about me. Well, that old man definitely didn't. I wish you to speak to the villagers and ask if they remember the King of Bountiful Harvest. I have tried asking them myself, you understand. But they treated me like some sort of fairy tale creature or flew into a mild panic at the sight of me. Please, kind-hearted human, I beg you to help me. I am really hyped right now, man. There's... DLC so far has had quite a couple of, uh... I wouldn't say twists, but just unexpected things that I am really happy with, like... Calyrex talking? I feel like that doesn't usually happen, at least in the games. Like, we've seen Mewtwo talk in the anime. It can apparently speak to humans by taking over Peony's body. Now I need to gather more information. Okay. We didn't really need that clue there, but... I guess now we gotta go talk to the townsfolks. The mayor definitely remembered him, but... He did say it was a fairy tale. I don't know about that anymore. I mean, if it showed up right in front of you, I don't know how you wouldn't believe in it. Do I remember the King of Bountiful Harvest? Of course! It's only the main tourist attraction of our lovely Freezington, after all. I imagine we would see more visitors if only the king were real. Anyway, this guy said he wants us to give us some carrots. Sure. Oh-ho! Quite the enthusiastic one, aren't ya? Though I must admit, these seeds are rather valuable to us. How about a trade? You bring me eight pieces of Dainitor and I'll give you the seeds. Life is all about quid pro go, or whatever the phrase was. Quid pro quo? I I've heard that before. Oh, El Tigre is still stuck, man. We do actually have eight Dainite ore, even though this is probably not the best investment of them, but... Sure. I want those carrots, man. Oh, wonderful! Now we can bury our ore in the fields and make our crops huge! Here are the seeds as promised. Is that how it works? You just put a little ore in the dirt and suddenly you got giant carrots? Well, I guess you can make some new curry then because these carrot seeds are definitely new. Don't go planting those. I gave you a willy-nilly in the village's fields now. These fields are for our own crops. So where the heck do we plant those carrot seeds? Maybe that's something to do with the story. I don't know, man, but that guy definitely wasn't one of the villagers that we got to ask Calyrex for. The King of Bountiful Harvest? I used to believe it was real, you know. I was told that if I made mischief in the mis in the fields, the king would steal my body away. The Pokemon King? Oh sure, my grand used to tell me stories about it all the time when I was a kid. An old fairy tale, that. So, they all believe in it, but they think it's a fairy tale? Which I guess means they don't actually believe in it? Or they don't think it's real, at least, but... 
I thought maybe talking to the other granny would be some different dialogue. They both got the same thing to say. The King of Bountiful Harvest, yes. If it exists, why doesn't it heal the land around here so we can grow crops for a change? Just keep growing those carrots, man. I'm sure you'll be fine. Is there anyone else that we have to ask, though? I mean, I don't think there's actually any more villagers unless you count the ones in the buildings. Okay, well, if we hadn't talked to both sisters before, then now we definitely did. Maybe it's this guy again? Oh, yeah, okay, so we got some carrots from him before, but now he wants to talk about the king, huh? All I can tell you is its name. I think it was called Calvin, <laughs> or was it Callista? Don't think it was Callista. Calvin, though, he's pretty good, man. He makes some good underwear. Anyway, that should be it. Please, Calyrex, tell me that was it. That was a very slow turn you did there. And it seems like there's still more people to talk to. Are you kidding me? Dude, there's no way. There's no other villagers here. Oh, this lady here. How could I have missed you and your cute little spiel? Oh, dear, I'm sorry. I'm rather busy doing nothing right now. <laughs> awesome. Well... That's officially the final old person in the village that we needed to talk to. I like how it's literally just all old people living here. Like, no young person would ever come out here live in the, in the Trundra. Human child, I trust you were able to speak to the villagers. So, how was it? Did they say anything about me? They did, but... Yeah, it's all just children's stories, man. It is as I suspected. Nobody truly believes that I am real. It seems the people of this land have indeed forgotten the bond they once shared with me. Hmm? Oh no, of course I'm not grieving. I am the king of Bountiful Harvest after all. I know better than to count on humans to remember me. This proves beyond doubt that I cannot simply rely on human faith if I want my powers to return. If only my loyal steed were to return to me, I would regain something of what I've lost. Loyal steed? Like, uh... Rapidash? Yes, the four-legged Pokemon that I used to ride all across the land. So it's a deer that rides a horse. Got it. The very same Pokemon that my statue in the village shows me riding. Alas, though in ancient times we spent many days together, dashing through the valleys and over the mountains of this land. My power waned, and I was forced to part ways with it. Now I know not where it may be. Even if we should succeed in locating my loyal steed, I have my doubts as to whether it has remained, well, loyal. I have lost so much power. Perhaps the villagers know something about my currently not so loyal steed. I would be in your debt if you could speak to the head of the village on my behalf. If you are able to find any information at all, I ask that you let me know. I can probably find some information, but... It's not exactly in the game to catch what I'm saying. Uh, uh, chief, with a Masanagan? Oh, wait, no, it, it's normal. I must have fallen asleep where I stood. <laughs> Sorry about that, Chief. Still, I feel strange, like my body's not quite my own. Guess I'll head back to base and get some rest. Besides, it's freezing out here. Peony has no idea what just happened, huh? I love him, man. He really is our honorary dad. But I guess uh, now we just move along? Because... Well, no, actually, Calyrex wanted us to go talk to the mayor. Calyrex is making me extra gassy right now, man. Or maybe it was the lunch I had. The mayor's not home at the moment, but he was just here! He went to have a look at the fields in the giant's bed. You can go look for him if you're in a hurry. The fields in the giant's bed are to the southeast of the village. Go through Frostpoint Field and just keep going to the left. To the left, to the left. Alright then. Get to do a little bit more exploring. My favorite pastime. As you guys have learned a little bit ago. And I think we actually get a new bike here in the Crown Tundra too. So maybe we can find that. Oh look, it's a little Nidoran. And actually we can also go behind this house. To get ourselves a bottle cap. Not bad. Someone was apparently saying you could shiny hunt the legendaries. Does that mean we already missed out on the shiny Suicune? And I think I might have missed out on an item. Because I swear, yeah, I saw something glowing here earlier. It's an energy root. 
That's pretty cool though. I mean, not cool that we missed out on the shiny Suicune, but cool that you can get shiny legendaries and a Bomba Snows running right at us. Oh yeah, I haven't actually checked out the Suicune that I was just talking about. I wonder if it does have five IVs or what? Four perfect IVs and its special attack, or I mean defense, which is its boosted stat is only defense. So it's not the, not the greatest Suicune that I've ever seen here. It does have a decent nature and I mean, if we raised it to level 100, you could always just use a bottle cap on that special defense IV. So it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not a perfect Suicune by any regards, but it is pretty dang strong. Oh my goodness. Just a bunch of Obama Snows out here. At least Dub Wool brings a little bit of variety and an EXP candy. But that was an extra small, man. Why would we want an extra small? Yo, footprints. Okay, we're going to try to focus on all those footprints probably next time. Oh wait, there's actually a lot of them, so F it, man. You know, I did the guide before for the Diglets, and it really wasn't worth it not or waiting to show how to get all of them. So I'm going to just grab all the footprints that we find as we go, and I'll just edit it somehow in the video later. As we got three footprints right in a row there. I don't actually see any other ones around here though, but... Maybe they're a little bit harder to spot than I think. Aw, oh, Amora is so cute, man. We already failed to catch one, though, so I'm not going to go for it again. But let's see what's in this Dynamax den. Just for fun. We got Audino, really? There was literally an Audino just outside. Like, non-Dynamax, but still. I was hoping for something different than what we've seen already. And we got a Berry Tree as well. I mean, the Isle of Armor had berry trees too, so I'm not surprised, but maybe there's some new berries to be found here. The man bomb! Oh gosh, he's a bomb of snows, man. They're pretty scary, but it seems like it's pretty much a straight shot over to where we're supposed to go. There's the Nidoran male to go along with the female one we saw earlier. I don't know if Nidoran was actually in the game yet. I don't think it was. Oh, there's another female one actually. And somehow we're out of the snow already. Or not exactly. I mean, it's still snowing. It is a tundra after all. Ston Joner in the wild. Yo, it's so cool. I mean, in the overworld. I like the way you walk, man. Very nice. We got Bronzong too. And some type of temple. Rotom Dex. What? Oi, it's me, Peony. How are things, Chief? What's that? You found some place ruiny looking? That's gotta be one of those places. You know where the legendary giants are supposed to be? You see a door with mysterious writing on it? I hear no one's ever been able to get it open. If all that's true, I think I'd call this particular adventure... The Terrible Titans Lurking Locked Away! Lot of alliteration for Mr. Peony, huh? Well, how's that grab ya? Right then, Chief. I'll eagerly leave the rest of this research in your hands. Talk to you later. So yeah, judging by the clues that we got earlier, I'm gonna guess that not every temple is for the new Regis. So this is probably the run for Reggie Steel here, since it looks, well, not really very steely. It might be Reggie Rock actually. There's four temples total, and one of them is the red and yellow one, which is obviously for the new Reggie Eliki and Reggie Draco. So this temple here is probably either for Reggie Steel, because that is the layout of its dots. I definitely remember that. So far, it's been pretty much the same Pokemon in the whole Tundra, though, which is kind of weird. I mean, there's some new ones, like the Bronzong there. Not new to the Tundra, but like in the overworld so far. We've mainly seen Cryogonal, Jinx, Audino, and... I guess the Mamoswine from earlier, Piloswines too. Oh, there's the Nidorita now. A little evolution there. I wonder, ah, oh, I was about to call it, dude. I was about to say, I wonder if the Nido King is somewhere around or Queen. And it literally popped up right then and there. But I think the temple is this way. I don't know exactly where we're supposed to go then to find the mayor of the town. They said the giant's bed, right? So this is definitely not the right spot. But we might as well do a little bit more exploring. We grab ourselves this item over here, a Max Revive. Not very inspiring. 
I mean, a lot of the items we've found so far haven't exactly been too unique, aside from the uh, utility umbrella back in the village. I swear, those looked like fruit prints for the legendary steeds or whatever they were called, but it was just rocks after all. So maybe those are going to be a little bit harder to find than even the diglets from back on the Isle of Armor. We got a cracked pot. I don't know if that's the one for the special. Oh, well, there's some footprints. We got 8% now for the grassland Pokemon. Does that mean they're all separate or every footprint counts for that 100% and then we'll be able to catch all of them? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we find more footprints. But where the heck is the giant's bed at, dude? I'm gonna just speed my way over here and hope that this is the right way. Got a strong Vanillish. And we got the old cemetery. So no, this was not the way. Where are we right now? Oh, wait, that was the, the giant's bed was right there. Huh? So we were in the giant's bed already. Oh my god. Dragapult in the wild? What? Excuse me for the courtiness, but that is quite wild. I love that cry, dude. Dragapult gotta have one of the best cries of all time. Not just Sword and Shield mods, but... Might as well explore the old cemetery here before we head back to the giant's bed. What else is in the cemetery? A fancy apple and a Frostlass in the wild. I don't remember if Frostlass was in the base game. I guess we can find out by running straight into it. Really awesome Pokemon. I, I definitely spoke too soon in terms of the wild Pokemon not being varied enough because we got some pretty cool ones popping up now. Although it seems like Frostlass we'd already seen before. Run away from the spooky ghost. And over to another item. A Poke Doll. Pretty small cemetery. I mean, it is a pretty small town back in whatever it was called. But this is the giant's bed. So the mayor has to be somewhere around here. Do we actually just walk past the cemetery and past the Dragapult? I don't know. I feel like he might be over this way. This seems like an important area. Oh my god. We got Aerodactyl, who was also in the Sword and Shield beta in the overworld. So we've had two Pokemon so far that have kind of thrown me off. Oh, he's chasing after us, but he ain't quite fast enough. I feel like I've definitely missed a lot of the footprints. Oh, the Electorizer. Okay. So you can get yourself an Electivire now. I'm pretty certain that means that Electabuzz and Elekid we're not in the base sword and shield then, because now we got, well, we can get not only them, but Electivire as well with that Electorizer. But the old man's got to be somewhere around here, right? This is like the upper area of the giant's bed. And yep, like I said, there he is. Is this where we get to plant our carrots then? Alas, this field is no good either. The soil is barren. No crop could possibly grow here now. Perhaps the lands of the Crown Tundra are truly beyond hope. What's this? Our oh, dear visitor, what brings you here? I'm here for the carrots, man. You want to learn about the loyal steed of the King of Bountiful Harvest? Well, this is hardly the place for storytelling. Come to my home in Freezington. It's better to have a nice chat in the warmth after all. Please visit whenever you're ready. I'll be waiting. I mean, I feel like the people around here are pretty used to the cold, so... I appreciate it, but at this point you're just making me run back and forth, man. There's something written on the pedestal. Wanna read it? I don't know why we wouldn't. Before long, the ruffian had bent its knees to the king and become its loyal steed. Our people's faith in the king grew firm and unwavering. Our ancestors built a temple around the sacred sapling atop a tall mountain to give the king a worthy home. Moreover, they crafted a set of reins to let the king command its proud steed with ease. Anybody know what they're talking about? Because I have no idea. And that is also a hypothetical, or a rhetorical question. As in, I don't need the answer. We got a float stone. Very light and reduces the weight of Pokemon when held. I feel like we're still missing a bit of information in terms of 
this whole loyal steed thing. I mean, the old man is gonna tell us more about it, but on that slab, it gave us like half of the story there. So maybe we'll find the other half in the next episode as Stan Joner will wrap this one up for us. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I will catch you then.